Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, glory, 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 hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Glory, 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 glory to the Lord God Almighty. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom citizens. How are you all doing? I pray and hope that you all woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord, and that you are ready to conquer and walk victoriously in Jesus Christ this morning, today. Amen. So this is Dive Into the Word, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting into the Word every day. Every day we're getting into the word. Amen. So this morning we are in Exodus 28 and 29. And then Matthew 23. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, Abba Father, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have woken us up this morning, that you've planned and purposed and have us in your will to be in this day, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are preparing our tomorrow we give you all glory, honor, and praise, Lord. Excuse me. We thank you, Lord, that you hold our hands, you hold our right hands so that we will not be moved. We pray that you help us to have a grip on you so strong that it we will never let go, Lord God. Help us to have a grip on the hem of your garment, Lord God. Help us to be able to walk in your ways. Help us to be able to talk the way you talk, see the way you see, and hear the way you hear, Lord God. And just increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as we get into your word, Lord God. Holy Spirit, teach us. Teach us, be with us, and fill our spirit. Fill us with your holy fire. Fill us with ambition and drive for the for the um, for heaven. Fill our spirits with everything that we need to pursue after you, to labor in you, Lord God, and to be about your will, your purpose, and your plan, and to be willing, obedient spirits um, to you, Father God. And we just glorify you and we thank you for your healing. We thank you for your healing spirit, your healing hands. And that you are making ways out of no way. And we thank you and we pray this in the presence of Jehovah. In the spirit of Jesus Yahweh. In Jesus holy mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning kingdom citizens. Alright. So if you have not shared already. This is your moment to share. Share, 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 invite. So 
So if you have not shared, this is your moment to share. And this time lapse on on this time lapse between I don't you know this this is really tripping me out. There's a a, a delay uh, in the feed. All right, so let's go to Exodus 28. Exodus 28. So if so we've been we've been reading about the uh the building of the tabernacle and um the table and the ark and we 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 we've been reading and 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 realizing that God wanted this so he can continue to have a relationship with the the Israels so he can continue to be able to come, commune with them, and 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 have a relationship with them. So that's where that's where we're at in Exodus. Um. So let's do twenty eight. And take thou unto the Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister unto me in the priest's office even Aaron, Nadab and Abihu Eleazar and Ithamar Aaron's sons and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So that's that's awesome. So God is saying there are there are people that I have poured knowledge, the wisdom into to know what Aaron's garment is supposed to look like. You know, they'll be able to uh, sew and make Aaron's garments. So Aaron and his sons are going to be able to be in the Holy of Holies to minister unto God, to be a priest. So they have to wear special clothing. They have to wear special clothing from everybody else. All right, so verse four. And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate and an ephod and a robe and a broadered coat, a mitre, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. The ephod, oh, I'm reading the title. Sorry. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and fine twined linen with cunning work. And it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same, according to the work thereof even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And thou shalt take two onks stones, engrave on them 
the names of the children of Israel. Six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. And thou shalt make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the ends of wreathen work shall thou make them and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. Now, I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have to write that word down, ouches, because in our English language, ouch means pain. <laughs> so I need to know, so we're going to observe that it's according to clothing, um, but we gotta we got we gotta look that up on Friday. So on Friday when we look that up, we, we gotta remember that it's pertaining the context is pertaining to clothes. Ouches. Okay. Alright, so verse 15 And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work, after the work of the ephod. Thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen. Shalt thou make it. Four square it shall be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis, a topaz, and a car carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a, a ligure, and a gate, and an amethyst, amethyst. And the fourth row, a barrel, and an oinx, and a jasper. They shall set, they shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name shall be according to the twelve tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the end of wreathen work of pure gold. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shalt put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two wreathen chains thou shalt fasten in the two ouches, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate, in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make, and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the forepart thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they shall bind the breastplate, by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod and Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial 
before the Lord continually. Verse 30, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the thum Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue, and there shall be an hole in the top of it in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of an Habergian that it that it be not rent. So we're, I'm writing that word down. And again, it's talking about close H A B. I'm going to write on the side of this clothing. Okay. All right, so verse 33 and beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bells of gold between them round about a golden bell and a pomegranate a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about excuse me and it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord and when he cometh out, that he die not. Oh, so so on the on the clothing there's like a bell. Okay. So so Aaron has to wear like a certain bell so that way when he's coming in, it makes a sound so God knows that it's him. Even though God will know that it's him, but it's like, because not just anybody can walk up in there, just, just walk in where God is. So it's like, it, it's announcing Aaron. This is Aaron, you know, that that's awesome. All right. So verse 36. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engraving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be. So mitre, mitre, we're going to write that word down. So verse 38, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel shall hollow and all their holy gifts. And it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitre of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets, shall thou make for them for glory and for beauty. Good morning, good morning, kingdom citizen, good morning. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place that they bear not iniquity and die it shall be a statue forever unto him 
and his seed after him. So when it came to God's priests, when it, when it came to God's priests, he, he, he was very specific on what they wore when, when, when they come into the presence of God, when they come into the holy place, you know. So I, there's a picture in my Bible of something of what it's supposed to look like. So you can see the stones, the stones here, the stones going across the straps right here. You can see this thing on his forehead. He had to wear this thing so that way it marks his forehead. And this is what Aaron had to wear. And so his sons, his sons got coats. So God was very, very specific. So even when it came to the tabernacle, when it came down to the tabernacle, when it came down to the table, when it came down to the the ark, and, and now now the clothing of Aaron and his sons uh, to come and minister unto him, he was very, very specific on what they wore. So God was like, you can't just come to me wearing anything. You, you can't come to me just wearing any old thing. You have, you have to be dressed down to the T. And, and, and that's why he even, he even put, he even put, I, I, I poured the spirit of wisdom. I like that. I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's um, garments. So when 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 we when we when we come before the Lord, we don't want to just we don't want to just be all you know, especially when we you know we we want to we want to come dressed you know in in a, a specific attire and so you you need to pray and ask God what that is you know whenever when whenever you know God God will let you know what what he he what he wants to see you in you know <clears throat> but not all of us are priests so so if you are a priest God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And 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 he 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 would like it if you are in specific attire when it comes to his priests. When it comes to uh those that minister unto him. All right, so any comments? Any comments? Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. If you are just coming on, we just got through reading Exodus 28. Um, and now we're going to read Exodus 29. All right, so Exodus 29. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hollow them to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, and cakes unleavened, tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened, anointed with oil. Of wheat and flour shalt thou make them, and thou shalt put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket, with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation 
and shall wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod of the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles. Aaron and his sons and put the bonnets on them and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute that and thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons and thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock and thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar and thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inwards and the caul that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar but the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall thou burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Thou shalt also take one ram and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram and thou shalt slay the ram and thou shalt take his blood and sprinkle it round about upon the altar. And thou shalt cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him and his legs and put them unto his pieces and unto his head. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savior and an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the other ram and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then shalt thou kill the ram and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of of his sons and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about and thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him and he shall be hollowed and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. Also thou shalt take of the ram the fat and the rump, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and the call above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and the right shoulder, for it is a ram of consecration. And one loaf of bread, and one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer out of the basket of the unleavened bread that is before the Lord. And thou shalt put all in the hands of Aaron and in the hands of his sons and shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And thou shalt receive them of their hands and burn them upon the altar for a burnt offering for a sweet savior before the Lord. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be thy part. And thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering, and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, and of that which is for his sons. And it shall be Aaron, Aaron's and his sons by a statue forever from the children of Israel. For it is a heave offering, and it shall be a an heave offering from the children of Israel of the sacrifice of their peace offerings, even their heave offering unto the Lord. So I am going to write heave. I 
I'm writing I'm writing down words that we, we can look up uh, on Friday. All right, so verse 29, and the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him to be anointed therein and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is and that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. And thou shalt take the ram of the consecration and seat his flesh in the holy place. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain unto the morning, then thou shalt burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons according to all things which I have commanded thee. Seven days shalt thou consecrate them. And thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement. And thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. So I guess it's saying that it took seven days. Uh, they had to go through a seven day thing before they could even come to the holy place. That they had to go through um, the offerings. And, and so it took seven days. In order for them to get in order for them to come to the holy place to minister. I believe that's what I'm reading. All right. So verse 38. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. And with the one lamb, a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. And the fourth part of a hen of wine... Oh, excuse me, hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, and shalt do thereto according to the meat offering in the morning. And according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord where I will meet you to speak there unto thee. And there I will meet with the children of Israel and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be th their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Excuse me, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. That is so awesome. So we know we... I, I am getting the understanding that the priest, when you are a priest, it's pretty much your job 24-7. Like, when you are a priest of the Lord, that's that that, that pretty much is going to take, take your whole day when you are a priest. 
I'm trying to um So go back and read some of your commentaries. There, there's a lot of commentary um, where it breaks down the offerings. Um, the it breaks down the offerings and um, I'm trying to I'm trying to look and see what part of the commentary can I read There's so there's so much there's so much Anyway so um that that that's that's interesting very very interesting any comments any comments i do i do i do i do love the fact that it 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 it, it ends it with us knowing that god god is really wanting to you know you know because his his kingdom is holy okay there's there's no evil in his kingdom so when he when he comes down he wants to be able to come down and be able to commune with the, the with the people of Israel he he wants he wants to be able to he wants to be able to sanctify them and and actually come he says i will meet i will meet with the children of Israel i will meet with you at the door I will I will meet with you, speak there unto you. I will meet with the children and shall sanctify and, 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 and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. You know, it's like he wants. So in order for God to be able to come down, everything has to be holy. Perfected, because in his kingdom, there is no darkness in him. There is no darkness in the kingdom. Where, where he's coming from, there's no evil, there's no wicked. So he wants to be able to come. So you got to be sanctified. They got to be sanctified. They got to be cleansed. They, they have to ha they have to wear specific clothing, you know, because this is how they dress. This is, I, I, I believe, you know, th the angels are wearing specific clothing. You know, the angels aren't just wearing anything, you know. So when when we when we even see, you know, angels attire, they 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 have specific clothing on. And so that's 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 awesome and amazing. But I do I do encourage you to go back and read some of your commentary um on the on the different offerings. It kind of it kind of explains it a little bit, like some of them are peace offerings, sin offerings, um, wave offerings, and, and 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 you know now we can just you know we lift our hands to the Lord. Any comments? Any comments? All right, so we can go move on to Matthew twenty three. I'm just pausing. We got we, we we gotta learn to pause for a second, let those words kind of soak in. Uh I'm I'm pausing to give y'all moments to be able to um make comments if you have any comments, any questions. If you have any questions, I will do the best I can to answer them when it comes to the old testament. Um 
This is our second time around together, reading it together. So I'll do my best. <laughs> but here we, 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 we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, right? We allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, especially when it comes to um, all the different offerings and burnt offerings and things that they had to do um, in Moses' time. And, 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 and you also, you got to understand also, even all the way up, even all the way up until, uh, you know, uh, the moment even when Jesus Christ was born, they were still having to do some of these, um, these offerings. They, they were still having to go through these, um, go through these things in order to be able to be presented. And that's why it says for Aaron, Aaron and his sons and and, and generations after him. So Aaron's lineage, Aaron and his sons and, and the generations after Aaron would have to wear these particular clothing they were they were they were the priests they were they were in the office of the priests so it continued on all the way even up when Jesus Christ was born so they had to they had to do this for 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 a very very long time all right so let's go to Matthew 23 and if you have any comments any questions uh, please, please feel free to make them. And good morning, Kingdom Citizens, if you are just coming on. Good morning, good morning. All right, Matthew 23 says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to, to be borne. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So he's saying the scribes and Pharisees they they act like they act like they're Moses, and they they're they're he's saying the scribes and Pharisees are are doing all the same. You you supposed to be doing this 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 this. And, and they're not even doing anything that they're directing the people to do. You know, so he's like, all there, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So, but he's, he's saying, do, do the works and things like that, but don't, don't be like them. Don't do what they do. He said, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So they 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 give directions, they do all this, but they don't even they don't even they don't even uh what what's the saying? Uh uh I forget the saying where where you where where he says um, do what you preach. They don't do that. He says verse five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their what is that phylacteries. Okay, you know we're looking that word up. 
I guess it's pronounced phylacteries. We are definitely looking that word up. All right. Okay, so verse five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. So, so he said, do not be like the scribes and the Pharisees. You know, the scribes and the Pharisees think that they sit in the same seat that Moses sat in and they don't. But they go around and they 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 point fingers and they they have you do the work that they don't do that they don't even do and then they and then they put themselves in the uppermost rooms where people can see them they do the works in front of people where people can see them and 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 they and they just want to be called rabbi and he said no and don't you call yourself a rabbi you know he says do not be called a rabbi like they like they want to be called they want to be called a rabbi so verse 9 and call no man your father upon the earth wow i've never noticed that before has anyone ever noticed that before and call no man your father up on the earth for one is your father which is in heaven huh I've never noticed that we've read this before and that didn't even ever hit me before <laughs> okay so says neither be ye called masters for one is your master even Christ so Jesus 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 came Jesus came and and and, and, and we and we've we noticed this before in, in in at the beginning of Matthew how Jesus came with a whole new set of standards like a whole like he he came and he changed the game you know so verse 9 and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven neither be ye called masters for one is your master even Christ but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant So I am doing some underlining. Whenever a certain scripture really, really stands out to me. So holy, holy, holy spirit, really, really teach us what you're teach. What what are you teaching us, Lord? What are you teaching us? All right, so verse 12 and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are enter entering to go in Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense 
make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. He 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 is um he he's really going after them. Says, Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they are full of extortions and access. Thou blind Pharisee, Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sub-trays, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the subtrays of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Wow, so hold on. We got to read some commentary. Okay, so uh, I'm reading some of the commentary. Okay, so several centuries after Jesus, seats reserved for teachers of the Old Testament and synagogues were regularly called Moses' seat. Jesus did not intend to impose all the teachings of the Pharisees on his disciples. After all, he criticized many of their beliefs. He command, meant, obeyed the Pharisees' teachings whenever they accurately interpret the scriptures. The Pharisees sought to build a fence around the law, i.e. establish rules so strict that people would not even come close to breaking God's law. Okay, here it says, phylacteries, the word that I wrote down, phylacteries were small boxes containing tiny scrolls of Exodus chapter 13 verses 2 through 16 and Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 chapter 11 verses 13 through 21. They were worn by faithful Jewish men on one arm and on the forehead. Borders were tassels made of blue or white threads worn at the four corners of the outer garments. The Pharisees tried to appear more pious. So Jesus prohibited the use of, I guess, honorific titles for spiritual leaders that might encourage a sense of superiority in them or detract from the reverence that is properly due the Father and Christ. And there's so much more commentary. So part of the commentary says the rabbi's obsession with ritual purity led to neglect of inner spiritual purity. So I guess when he was uh, saying uh, you clean the outside of the of the cup and the plate, but you don't clean the inside. So it's like they made themselves look they made themselves look upright and beautiful on the outside but straight up dirty on the inside, you know? So scribe, woe unto the scribes and the Pharisees, the very ones that, that, that walk around. Um, I guess you would consider them the religious, more, more religious people. And they're the ones that walk around, um, you know, wanting you to still follow the laws of Moses, um, and and they they scold you and 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 try to make it very very difficult for you not to break the laws of Moses and things like that, and yet they are not they are not even fulfilling any of the things that they require of the people. Any comments? Any comments? Jesus is saying a whole lot in in Matthew 23. He he is saying a lot. But we we already know the what really stands out to me is verse 9 and 10.
And I guess another lesson to learn is definitely do not be uh, someone who walks around pointing out fingers, uh, making sure that everybody in the church house is doing what they supposed to be doing and you're not even doing every, everything you're telling them to do and you're not even doing it, you know. Don't don't be one of those. Don't be a, don't be a scribe and a Pharisee. Don't be somebody in the church house. Be the be the very one. You shouldn't be smoking, and you shouldn't be doing this, and you shouldn't wear those type of clothes, and you should. And and, and then you're turning around, and, and you're not even doing any of the things that you're you're getting after people about. You know. It's, I guess it's like it's, I guess it's like you know somebody who who teaches the truth but don't live it. They they teach the truth but they don't live the truth. If that makes any sense, there are people like that. They will teach you the right way. They will teach you the right way. They will teach you the truth, but yet they don't live it themselves. And and, and that's what the scribes and Pharisees. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They, that's what the scribes and Pharisees were doing. They were they were teaching so so they they were going around teaching the truth, but yet they didn't live it themselves. Behind closed doors, they were somebody else, you know. So on the outside, on the outside, it's like, oh, they're perfect. They do everything right, but but they they weren't they weren't they weren't perfect. They they were still they didn't even. They didn't even, they didn't even, uh, uh, what they were preaching and teaching, they were not doing, you know? And so you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be, you, you want to be truthful on the inside and the outside. You want, you want the Holy Spirit to really teach you on the inside as well as the outside. So he's saying, clean the inside, that way the out, clean the inside, that way the outside will be clean. You know, so Jesus, Jesus, uh, he he came after them. He's like, he called them serpents. He says serpents and generations of vipers. <laughs> and he already, and, and it's like he already let them know that. I'm sending I'm sending prophets and teachers of the I'm sending prophets and teachers of the word and you're going to end up and you're going to be the ones that end up killing you're the ones end up killing the prophets you know cuz he's already training the disciples to go out and to spread the word and, and but he he's already letting them know he's going to be the first of them that they're going to crucify, you know? So woe unto the scribes and Pharisees. Any, any comments, any comments? I'm really, really hoping and praying that uh, y'all get engaged and 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 um, begin to make comments. Now I I would love to be able to invite someone to come on, but for some reason Facebook done fixed it. To where you cannot actually bring somebody on your live anymore. Um, I don't know if they're going to change that back or fix it or what. But right now, um, they, they're not allowing you to let people come on your live for some reason. I don't know why they took that feature away. But, okay. but I would love it. I would love it if 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 I could bring somebody on to also make comments and and read along with me. Uh that would have been awesome. 
But any comments, any comments? All right, so if you are just coming on, good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizens. You'll have to go back and watch the replay. Um, we just got through reading Exodus 28 and 29. Um, where we pretty much learned the garments that Aaron and his sons have to wear uh, in Exodus 28 and 29, how they had to be sanctified and things like that. Um, so we just got through reading 28 and 29. You're definitely going to want to go back and read that. And then Matthew 23. Uh so if you are just coming on, we just got through reading those things. So good morning. Good morning. Don't forget to share and invite. We are on every morning at 530 Central Time. I want to make sure I put that Central Time. Um, but we are on at 530 every morning, diving into the word, getting into the words of God every single day. So share, invite and and set your alarms you know um i pray and encourage you to be a part of this so set your alarms uh we're on at 5 30 every morning and um yeah and so that's it for today so i love you love you all i really really do love you and i hope and pray that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.